Hello and welcome back. So if you've been uh, following along on my Instagram feed, you would have seen that I've recently acquired a, quite a bit of uh, Glaminatrix. So Glaminatrix have very quickly become one of my absolute favourite indie brands. I absolutely love their formula. Uh, the mattes are rich and pigmented and blend beautifully. The shimmers are just stunning. Uh, the duochromes are very duochromey. I really, really love this brand. So uh, they're up there with um, um, just that time of the evening where the birds are getting a bit loud and cranky. Um, so they're up there with some of the best brands that are all my favourite brands. So you know, when I think about singles and I think about my collection and I think about those brands that I absolutely love, they are brands like Davina and JD Glow and Sydney Grace and Makeup Geek and Give Me Glow and Terra Moons. That's kind of the genre of uh, of, of brands. Uh, Tammy Tanuka, of course, more recently, that I absolutely love. And certainly Glaminatrix are right up there with the best of the best. So I thought we would just jump through today and swatch out this particular collection. And uh, if that sounds like something that you'd like to see me do, then just keep watching. Alright, so jumping straight into the swatch fest, the first shade that we pull out here is called Naked Honey. It's just a neutral, basic transition shade. Nothing really special about it, it's just the perfect shade, not too warm, not too short, not too cool. Just a good all-round transition shade that you need in a palette this size. Second shade is called Cupcake. It's also quite a uh, pale transition type of shade, buffing out type of shade. This one has much more of a pink kind of undertone to it, but it's still very pale. Gorgeous soft pastel pink color, muted pastel pink. And the next one's called Breathless. Again, another transition type shade for me. This one has more of a lavendery, purpley kind of undertone. Use this quite a bit actually with silvers and cool looks. It's a very pretty color. Next one is called Pollen, kind of similar to Naked Honey but just a bit darker, um, a pretty standard kind of universal crease shade. The Glaminatrix matte formula is quite soft and powdery so it will kick up quite a little bit just something to be aware of if you don't like that um, it is just a soft beautiful powdery formula and that comes with being super opaque and super um, pigmented so i don't mind that at all so this shade breeze we get into a few of the peachy corally colors now breeze is the lightest of the three trying to wear more of these orangey shades I know they're good for blue eyes um, but I'm not naturally drawn to them so I'm trying to make a more concerted effort to use them more recently peachy keen is the mid-tone sure it's probably the darkest of the three just in terms of lightness to darkness I'll use that one quite a bit when I'm doing a sunset or warm tone look. And Sweet Peach is just a little bit more orange than the other two. So yeah, they're quite a powdery soft formula, but they're, they, as I said, they're super pigmented, really opaque. They blend absolutely beautifully. They build beautifully. They layer beautifully. 
and I honestly don't notice any fallout on the eye when I'm working with them if or if there is any it's very very minimal so um, I don't mind that bit of kick up in the pan at all I'm also noticing as I'm watching this as I'm editing back that I'm getting more powder or kick up in the pan uh, using my finger than I normally do with a brush as well so just something to note there into a couple of brown shades this one is seed this is just a real good all-rounder i use this quite a bit both for deepening and just for more neutral looks And the last one on this row is Violet Umber. So another deep brown, but this one has a very definite purpley, violety undertone to it. An absolute favourite for smoky plum eye looks. just see more of that purple undertone coming through there but fundamentally it's still a brown and that's the first row Into the second row now, the first one here is uh, Minty Fresh. It's just a beautiful light pastel um, mint kind of color, bluey mint. It's a gorgeous pastel. You'll see in a moment how opaque this is for a pastel, or just for any shade, but particularly for a pastel. I am also swatching over a very sinewy part of my wrist here, so it's not ideal. All of the swatches are more difficult in that area of my wrist, but you can see straight away for a light shade, that's really super pigmented. It's just gorgeous. Next one here is Posy. It's just a little bit darker. Another beautiful colour. Reminds me of springtime. Next one here is called Coast. It's really a mid tone, uh, true royal blue, really. I haven't used this one a whole lot. Blues are my least used color of all. Nice little collection of blues though. Just to round out that group now is this last one called Midnight, which is just a really deep teal kind of blue. see me going back in to swatch these two or three times don't be concerned about that they're super pigmented I promise you I'm just because of that kick up in the pan I'm just being very 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 gentle with my finger um, and not not picking up a whole lot with my finger so it's just requiring a couple of dips for most colors into some of the greens now the first one here is called vine this is a pale pastel green
very soft pretty colour. And the next one here is Field. I love this green, it's just a pure, perfect yellow tone, mid tone green. Very bright and springy as well. Gorgeous. And then we get into a couple of my favourites from this palette. I love yellow tone greens. This one is called Smog. I think both of these appear to be slightly more yellow as I as I look back through my view through my um, on my PC on my screen. But in real life, they've definitely got the green tone to them. They are greens. They're just very yellow tone greens. So that one there is Smog. a little bit more of a yellow tone than this one algae and a little bit more muted slightly algae is probably one of my top three favorites well is one of my top three favorites from this collection it's a super bright chartreuse green holds up really well in the eye too stays nice and bright beautiful And then the dark green here is called Camo, which is an um, army or military green. a versatile green that sits really well with neutral eye looks as well or you can amp it up and make it a full green look I'm just going to jump down a couple of rows here because there's one more green sitting down there on the end this one here called leaf you can never quite get the palette to lay out perfectly there's always not enough or too many for a nice neat row that's just the way that it goes doesn't it so this one's leaf this is a darker version of um, those greens we've seen earlier, um, darker, darker than field, greener than camo. It's a true leaf green. And that's it for that row. Now into the last row of mattes, we'll start with this gorgeous lilac purple matte called Periwinkle. Again, almost a pastel purple. Really pigmented, as you can see, nice and opaque need too much building. Next one's a favourite but embarrassingly it's not a Glaminatrix shade. So I got quite a surprise when I turned that one over to find it was a Sydney Grace colour called Regal. So it's a gorgeous colour if you're in the market for purples from Sydney Grace but we'll skip that one and just stick with Glaminatrix for this video. This one's called Burlesque. So quite an aubergine blue grey toned purple. Not sure how that Sydney Grey shade got to be in this palette. I must have been playing around with some purples at some point and I've forgotten about it. 
This one's another favourite. This is such a pretty colour. It's a real, it's called Fruitingle. It's a real um, orchid toned bright pink. So it's not too pink pink. I don't like pinks that are really red based. This one has more of a purple base, which makes it a gorgeous, gorgeous orchid colour. This one gets a lot of use. Same with this next one. It's another definite favourite called Nectar. It's a true, perfect purple. You can see that one's looking a little bit powdery there. My swatch was not great. But again, no issues at all with uh, the performance of Glamonatric Shadows. They're just gorgeous. So another very pretty shade. As is this one called, and the label's difficult to read now, it's worn off, but it's called Sitting Pretty. More of a blue tone purple, really lovely. You might notice that the labels are different on the back of some of these pans. Some have a clear label, some have the white label. Um, I had a couple I purchased last year that I was not happy with the performance of those at all. So I uh, made contact with the beautiful people at Glaminatrix and they did let me know that they were changing over formulas last year. So there were some residual formulas in a couple of the um, shades, which is what I had unfortunately received. They were happily changed that over for me, but just worth noting that I there are a few minor inconsistencies across this entire palette just based on what which formula I happened to pick, pick up at the time I would admit that was six or eight months ago now so I would imagine that would have all uh, leveled out now and they'll just be sticking with the current formula so Portello another really beautiful deep purple plum shade I like this one so much I've accidentally purchased it three times so it's a good thing I use it a lot because I have plenty of backups. Sundress, which is the perfect yellow. Nice bright sunny yellow. It's not too pale, it's not too orange tone, it's just a really true beautiful perfect yellow. This pairs beautifully with just about everything else in this palette. I've used this with most other colours in this uh, palette. It's, it's a gorgeous shade. It just cooperates well with everything else you use it with. And butterscotch is somewhere between a mustard and a yellow. It's not quite a mustard. It's not quite a yellow. It just sits beautifully in the middle. This is the sort of shade I tend to reach for um, in winter when I just need a slightly warmer yellow. Um, and also if I'm doing warm tone looks I tend to reach for this one more than the straight yellow all really really lovely And that's it for the mats. All right, now we're stuck getting into all the fun stuff, the um, duochromes and shimmers and metallics. The first one here is called Mermaid Scales. This is a really beautiful blue shifting translucent shimmery shade i use this one either as an inner in a, a corner highlight or as a topper the 
light in here is washing out how shiny that is but hopefully you can see as I move my arm that it's super shiny just a really pretty magical kind of topper shade or highlight the next one's called sundown this is another another similar sort of shade except this one has the pinky orangey red kind of shift to it a bit more toned down these are than the iridescence in the likes of Terra Moons or Cleona but there's definitely still a place for these The lovely inner corner highlight shade or topper. The next one here is called Lunar Eclipse. It's probably my least favourite in this entire palette. It's just a very muted version of Sundown that we've just seen, but it just doesn't have the same sort of interest factor. You can see there it's more flat. Meh, it's just a bit meh, just a bit pointless for me. I know I probably sound like an eyeshadow snob, but that particular one, I just think, what's the point, really? This one, though, is lovely. This is Jasmine. a little bit of a shift to it nothing too overt so all of these shifts are more subtle than you'll find in the Cleonas or the Terra Moons or Davinas so it's just a really beautiful pale gold I don't mind having more of these subtle shifting shades in my collection um, I've got so many that are so contrasting and so vibrant and so there that it's nice to have this bit of balance too. Chick is another duochrome. It's a yellow one, I believe it's from their Easter collection. It's a nice lemon metallic. Cloud Nine. A little bit of a shift there as you can see. But hopefully you can see they're just a bit softer, the shifts. I don't purchase Glaminatrix for the shiftiness of their shadows. Um, I purchase Glaminatrix because of the performance on the eyes, because of the intensity of them on the eye, because of how easy they are to blend and to maneuver and just because of how well they perform they last flawlessly for you know 10 12 hours um, and they're just really easy, easy to work with that's what draws me to glamonatrix martini has a bit of a gold coppery green shift again subtle basically this looks like a nice olive green on the eye light olive green a bit of gold This one here is called Lost Woods. Just a metallic dark teal. Glamonatrix has a new palette launching in March and it looks like that one's filled with duochromes and multi-chromes so I'm really quite excited to get my hands on that one and see how those shades compare to some of the other indie brands that I absolutely love, my holy grails. It looks good from what we've seen so far. So 
So that's the first row of the sparkly metallic duochrome type of shades. next row starts off with another one from the Easter collection this is the green version of the chick um, shade that we saw earlier this one's called hopping this has like a green a pale green to a pale lemon shift it's just a bit different this one it's very pretty very springy you can see that yellow shift in that one the next one here is wealth I'm partial to these metallic greens too particularly if they have a bit of yellow in them this is one of those These are really shiny too. The next one is a shade called Bank. My pan is absolutely overflowing. I've got a lot of bang for my buck with this one. It's totally chock a block. So you can see a little bit of shift in that again. pretty yellow tone slightly lighter green that's stunning on the eye all over the lid next one's called meadow it's more of a mid-tone green very pretty it's hard to choose favorites next one's called pixie it's a pale pastely um, minty blue kind of green minty bluey greeny minty blue does that make any sense at all you can see what that one looks like I icy and minty I would say one's called spearmint and that's exactly what it is it's a true spearmint color
next one is called Tiffany and again very true to the Tiffany blue color very pretty I haven't used this one yet once we start venturing into the blue family I just struggle a little bit with looks not my favorite but it's a gorgeous Tiffany duck egg kind of blue color if I had brown eyes I'd be all over that one next one's called high seas so again a tealy kind of blue two together are very nice and the last one's one that took me a little while to get hold of it's always out of stock this is called oceanic it's a gorgeous gorgeous duochrome so real green through to blue, different blues it's a really pretty color See that shifting there. It's one of those with a stronger shift in this palette. You can see a bit of a shift there. It's um, it looks shiftier in real life than you're seeing here. It's a beautiful colour. Includes another row. Right, this row starts off with another one of my favorites this is called euphoria this is one with a really really strong shift it's a little bit like uh, da venus chicana really beautiful really really shiny really shifty as you can see there that's what we want from our duochromes that's what I want from my duochromes absolutely love that one so that's a highly highly recommend next one's called sweetheart The pinky rose. It's also got some gold shift to it.
next one's called Crush. A bit more of a deeper pink. Hopefully you can see how shiny and reflective these are. This is one of the reasons I purchased Glamonatrix. It's almost got a red base, that one. The next one's called Perry Twinkle. It's basically the fanciest sister of Perry Winkle that we saw earlier. Same sort of tone, just a shimmer. Great pigmentation, great opacity. And then Grace. This is another one that I do wear quite often. It's a beautiful amethyst -y kind of purple. Twilight's another favourite. This one's very shifty as well. So there's definite duochrome activity here. The purple, you can see it as I move. Purple through to that. Mm, it's almost like a coppery orange colour. Again, a bit different than anything else I've got in my multi-chrome or duochrome collection. That's an interesting shift. Hopefully you'll see it a bit more when we do the close-up. Bit of blue. There's a bit of copper in there though too. It's just very pretty. Very fairy-esque. Rose. It's a pale of pink. And then bubblegum is a bright fuchsia pink. This one has some shift in it too. It's that pink to purpley blue colour, but not as contrasting as some of those other brands I mentioned earlier, but it's there. You can see that one there. And then the last one in this row is called Flora. And this one almost starts to move into a burgundy kind, burgundy kind of territory. Burgundy plummy brown.
Euphoria is a standout for me on that row, followed by Twilight. They're all gorgeous though. We'll just have a look at some close-ups. row the first one we're going into is some neutrals here this one's called divine and it is divine so it's like a pale gold, pale neutral gold. The next one is Simply Rose. This one comes off more like a true rose gold. Temptation. It's a gorgeous neutral coppery brown. gold there it is it's between a gold and a copper it's not a true gold it's deep it's a deep old gold next one here is really interesting this is called torn it's very much a cool tone lilac um torpy silver kind of shade with a little bit of a pale blue shift it's interesting I like this one because again it's different a bit unique. Peacock is our green brown. You can see the shift in that one.
sure what I was doing there, probably washing my hands quickly. <laughs> These are very so pigmented that my hands, you probably notice, have been getting constantly filthy between these swatches. So that's really super shiny too, that green on a brown base. keep trying to build these up because I don't think you're seeing in these swatches what I'm seeing when I was swatching them so they just have to trust me that they are better in real life Sandra is our deep blue one's not as shiny as the rest it's almost more of a amped up satin than it is a real shimmer icicle though is brighter this is our lighter blue one's very pigmented and that's it for our last row All right, so that's all of the swatches. Um, as you can see, they're really, really beautiful. Um, I highly recommend that you try this brand or a couple of these if you haven't already. They're just, um, they're just beautiful. I love them. So that's it for today. Um, I hope you found that useful and or enjoyable, either one. Uh, and I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.